Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Josh Freeman with Cooker Tech, and today we're going to be covering how to measure suspension travel. A couple of people, a couple of people may be asking, why should I measure suspension travel? And there's a couple of key components as to why. One thing is measuring the suspension travel or cycling the suspension is going to give you a rough idea of clearance. Say if you are going with larger tires or have somehow modified that area of where the tire rides to make sure you may have a problem, may not have a problem with that new setup. The other big factor is with measuring suspension travel. It also helps you get an idea on the part of the, using that number as the equation to figure out performance of a suspension system. And that number is pretty important to a lot of mathematical equations to help you figure out the performance of your suspension system on how you may be able to use that as your start point to improve or tune it into what you want to do with it. And then finally, suspension window or limits of what your suspension has. And that helps you out with also, once again, getting back into trying to figure out how to tune the suspension to optimize what you're trying to use it for. Maybe using the truck to haul for payload, maybe use the truck to go for performance for off-road, or you're trying to improve ride comfort, whatever it may be. So these are a couple of the reasons why measuring suspension travel can help you understand your vehicle suspension and how to improve it. So today what I'm gonna be doing is using my Humvee as the as the example of measuring suspension travel. And I'm gonna be covering it today. And we're gonna go with that next here. All right, so now I'm at the back of the truck. This is my Humvee M998, and I'm gonna be measuring the suspension travel on this. But the first thing I wanted to cover first is what I did to get set up in order to do this. So one of the first things I did on the truck, um, getting the rear end to measure, prepping it for measurement, is I removed the spring. And I don't want the spring to be part of the measurement because I wanted to see the full suspension system travel from maximum up to the maximum droop. Now the, the only way to achieve that is the spring has to be removed to see that. Uh, the next items that I did is covering, I'm gonna cover here what I loosened. So I loosened up the upper arm bolts and the lower arm bolts for this. And the reason I did that is because your arm bushings have resistance as the suspension system travels up or past its center point on the down. And I want the suspension system to free float as much as possible. And then finally, the last item, I did it on the front. Uh, the rear doesn't have it, but it's going to be the sway bar. Uh, you can cycle it with the sway bar, but you do at least want to disconnect it, disconnect it from the opposite side. Once again, when you're cycling the suspension, you want to have it free float as much as possible, but still contain all the major components as if it was a complete suspension system. So that's what I did first to get it prepped up. The next point um, I'm going to be covering is the limitations on here. So as far as the limitations, the way this truck is set up on full droop, the way these things are designed, is you have the shock back in here. Now the shock on full droop limits the suspension travel. It works as a limiting strap. And you also have a built-in hydraulic stop in them. Um, I, I was believe in the last little bit of the travel, there's a hydraulic stop on the down, and also on the way up, on the last bit of the up, you also have a hydraulic stop as well. On this design, the shock is used as the limiting strap for the drop, and also used as the bump stop on the up. If it was a different type of vehicle, we would be using the bump stop as our maximum up point, and finding it possibly using the shock on another vehicle as maybe the limiting strap on its design. Uh, most common, you don't want to use shocks as limiting straps, they are not designed for that. Um, but this design, the way in general design there is, they use the shock as a limiting strap to control the suspension. So that works, that's gonna indicate my maximum travel from down to maximum travel to up. So next part is, is actually gonna start, we're gonna start to measure here. The first part is you wanna find a fixed point on the chassis as square to the center of the hub as possible. So what I did to make a nice square center point and make to, as my center point, I added this additional rod onto uh, this bracket here so I can have a nice center point of measurement. So I can figure, make sure I'm measuring the exact same spot every time as much as possible. Um, the tighter your room of window is, the more precise you kind of want your measurements to be um, because if something goes wrong, or your measurements are off, you're gonna have some problems with whatever modifications you may be trying to do. So, and what I've been using as my 
fixed measurement point in the rear is actually the fender of the vehicle. Um, you can use the ground, but the thing is with the ground, you, the vehicle has to be, if you ever go to measure again, you've got to be using the ground. The other vehicle jacked up the exact same spot and position as before. Um, using the fender of the vehicle, it's a fixed spot. It doesn't change with the suspension system. So we're going to go from the fender. down to our center point. And that measures out at 27 inches. So at full droop, center point of the rear end is at 27 inches. So we know that our full droop is. Now we need to know what is our full up travel, maximum up travel. All right, so now we're gonna do covering the up travel. And I'm going to jack the suspension up until the shock just bottoms out. If this once again was a bump stop, I'd be kind of hitting a little bit into the bump stop, depending on the design that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so I have gone ahead and maxed out my suspension as high as it can possibly go. Uh, the shock is the bump stop in this scenario, so I have maxed out the uh, very tip point of the, sh of the shock, the full collapse, so therefore my suspension system can't go up any higher. And you don't want to go any more than as soon as you touch right there, because well, now what you'll be bringing into a factor as the suspension travel, since we have loosened up the upper and lower A-arms, is that you're going to get additional flex from those bushings, and that's going to throw off your measurement. So now, I'm going to measure off the fender to my center point and I have roughly 17 and a quarter inches off of that. So my previous measurement, the suspension system at full droop was at 27 inches. So that puts me at nine and a quarter inches of full suspension travel. That tells me I got nine and a quarter inches to work with on this truck and I was trying to optimize my factory suspension system. Um, with whatever I'm trying to use with the vehicle. So another reason why you want to check something like this, say you are looking to increase your tire size and you want to build a bigger tire. Um, taking, cycling the suspension, having the wheel on here, cycling it up and seeing where that vehicle lands to make sure you're not gonna have clearance issues. If you plan on utilizing all that suspension travel, um, is, is a big deal. And you don't want to put a big wheel on, go off-roading, have a lot of flex, and then the wheel crashes into your fender, or rubs on certain parts of the vehicle that you don't want. Once again, my name is Josh Freeman with Cooker Tech, and today we're getting technical. Thank you guys for watching today.